Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I am going to touch upon or share one of my unpopular opinion. I don't believe in prompt engineering. Yes, I know that a well-formatted prompt many a times produces good responses from an LLM, but that shouldn't be the case. It's AI. AI should be able to understand and respond optimally even for our vague prompts. And that is where I believe future lies. So maybe prompt engineering is a thing at the moment, but I don't see it remain relevant in near to far future. Having said that, let's take a look at this new tool called as Prompt Poet by Character.ai. It is a flexible framework developed to design and iterate over high quality prompts. Prompt Poet, according to their GitHub page, enables efficient design and management of prompts without the need for intricate string manipulations. And it also enables the users to focus on creating effective prompts, freeing them from the technicalities of coding. Also, if you read through their GitHub repo, which you can see on your screen, it says simplifies prompt design. I don't agree with that. Now, one might think that it means that this whole prompt poet thing makes it really easy for us to write very complex prompts very quickly. That is not the case. That's far from it. Prompt engineering was never about coding. It's about coming up with properly formatted compatible instructions for a model to get optimal response. So when this prompt poet, which could be a good tool and there is no denying it but i think we should separate out hype from the reality when it says that it is good for low code no code prompt engineering was never about coding it was always about coming up with nicely written properly formatted compatible instructions for a model to get optimal response that's about it so i'm not really sure why prompt poets repo even talk about coding and not having to worry about it what prompt poet has done that it has combined yaml and jinja to templating yaml is simply a human readable format to arrange data whereas jinja 2 is a templating engine to separate presentation logic from application logic let me explain with an example let me take you to my vs code where i have just written a very simple example to show you what is yaml and what what is jinja 2 templating so this first section from line number three to six is a yaml file the name of the file is data.yaml this is our application logic where we have some configuration like the name of the person is john doe and the title is mr so name is key, John Doe is value, title is key, and then Mr. is a value. So we have arranged our data and key value pairs in this YAML file. So this is what YAML is. And this primarily just defines your application logic. Then we have our Jinja2 templating, where we have, instead of putting our presentation logic in our same code, we have separated it out into Jinja2 file. So the name of the file is J2 or Jinja2, greetings.j2. And this whole thing is a Jinja2 templating for HTML. Now, this is our presentation logic. This could be for HTML, this could be for text, it could be for markdown or any other presentation format. But we, here what we are doing, we are defining our data in this and then presenting our data in this html format so we have separate them out now in other words yaml is storing the data in human readable format like this configuration whereas this jinja2 template engine is rendering dynamic content using the data from yaml so this is a data in the template whose value will be populated from yaml file and dynamic this is dynamic so this is where we are separating the application logic from presentation logic Appli application logic is getting the data from various sources for example this data might be coming from databases your external apis and then get stored in yaml file whereas 
Jinja2 template is rendering the data from YAML file into a user-friendly format which could be HTML or text or whatever. So I hope that is clear. Now let me show you how that is relevant with our prompt poet because it is also using the YAML and our Jinja2 templating. Now in this example which you see on your screen, this section over here from line number 2 to line number 17 is a Jinja2 template with the prompt poet. Here we are simply defining our prompt template where we have system instructions for AI model that what it is supposed to do and then you see same variable or dynamic content we are passing it and then similarly we are giving it user query whatever user is going to pass and then response from the character and then once prompt template prompt poet processes it with our whatever data we are going to pass it then it is going to generate this yaml file out of it and this final structured yaml file which is produced by prompt poet is then used as an input for the AI model to generate a response. So you see that we have used our application logic here and then we have defined that, uh, this template for in the Jinja2 and then it has generated from the presentation logic the structure and content of the prompt in YAML format. And the prompt poet primarily is using both of these to generate a dynamic prompt for the AI model. So you would need to spend quite a considerable time in order to come up with the prompt as per your own use case where you will be defining a raw template with your system instructions, user query and responses, whatever the use case is for your application. And then from there, it is going to generate this YAML file which you can put as an input to the model. Now, this is just a start. Prompt Poet goes beyond it. It also lets you do some uh, queue question and answering bot thing. You can truncate old messages. You can adapt to user modality. You can target specific query because of its filtration. And then it also lets you do the function calling and a lot of other stuff. And you can find these examples on their uh, GitHub repo and I will drop the link to there in the video's description. So don't think that you will just feed in some stuff where prompt poet is going to generate a poetry out of your prompt that is not going to happen now let me show you how you can get it installed locally and then play uh, around with it you can use it with any model of your choice because it is model agnostic but for the purpose of completion i'm end up is i'm just going to go with openai so you would need uh, to go to platform.openai.com and grab your api key from there if you haven't already or you could use it with any local model. So let me uh, take you to my terminal. So you can see that I am running Ubuntu 22.04 here and um, courtesy to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. I am using this NVIDIA RTX A6000 as a GPU with 48 GPU of VRAM but as this is an API base so you won't need that much GPU for this video. And if you are looking to rent a good GPU I will drop the link to their website in video description plus a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPUs. Let me create a virtual environment for prompt poet and then we will go from there. That is done. Let's install prerequisites and prompt poet. So you see at the end I'm also installing prompt poet because I'm using OpenAI. So I'm also going with OpenAI. So let's wait for it to get installed and then I will clear my screen this is going to take a couple of minutes that is done i have also set my open ai's api key in the environment let me launch the jupyter notebook because i will use it in the browser that makes it easier to look at so i'm just launching my jupyter notebook in the browser and my jupyter notebook is launched let me now show you the code so if i scroll up here you see that I'm just importing some of the stuff. If you haven't already, you can set the OpenAI's API key. And this is the raw template which I showed you where we are just giving it some system, user and response. And then this is a template data which you can either pass from here or from your database or API. And then here we are just passing 
the raw template to the prompt and then we are getting the response back from the model so let me run it and show you what it looks like i'm also going to print the response here so let me run it so you see that model has returned a very finely written response due to our prompt template now if you just print what exactly that message looks like which we sent to model it will something like this let me run it there you go so this is the array where it has um, divided into system user and response and then it has also populated that Jinja2 templating dynamic content with these values the Jeff username and the question and stuff so all in all um, it just makes it easy for you to separate out your application logic with your presentation logic with the help of YAML and Jinja2 templating uh, it definitely adds more overhead more time in order to embed these things in your application plus you would have to spend considerable time to get this template right because if you don't get this template right there is no point in using this tool so for me i would rather spend more time on grounding my data making my whole prompt template um, more holistic accordingly and then instead of you know wasting time on the site of Jinja2 templating and then doing this sort of stuff I mean if I have to do this I will just strictly or directly use it in the chat ML or any other prompt template instead of just defining this template separately and passing data from it um, also if you are following through the code in the repo there is a typo there um, and I spent like half an hour on this one make sure that you use langchain underscore openai instead of uh, just langchain which they are using that's quite old and if you haven't already make sure that you you also install pip install langchain underscore openai in your terminal before you run it otherwise it won't work so that's it guys let me know what do you think um, again I have been proven wrong before and I'm happy to be corrected so let me know what do you think if you disagree you know uh, just discuss and let me know in the comments happy to discuss it in more detail if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps thanks for watching